This is the Troll Patrol. Why? With Justin Freakin. Welcome to the Troll Patrol Live. It's a freaking Sunday. And uh, this is the Too Hot for YouTube edition of the Troll Patrol. It's always great waking up and finding out you've been suspended from YouTube. For not doing anything! For not doing anything! Shut up, Warlord! Murder was the case they gave me, but I did not commit it. I did, I did not do what I was accused of. I'm still pissed about it. I am gonna cry about it. I was on the, I was on the live chat with YouTube for like an hour and they, they had to be like, sir, if you keep using this kind of language, we're not going to be able to help you. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Well, it wasn't anything that got me like, it wasn't anything I did the other night that got me banned. It was a video from like two months ago. You remember the sound of freedom? We, we played a clip of Patrick Bet David talking about the sound of freedom. And he's like, the movie starts off, they drop these kids off with some stranger they've never met before and leave them all day. And I like flip out. And I'm like, well, the entire premise of the movie falls apart if the parents j weren't just complete fucking idiots, right? That's, a, that's, that's the video. They, they popped me for spreading conspiracy theories. And then as I was on the, the chat, the chat bot, or the real person named Echo, do I believe I was talking to a bot or do I, it kind of seemed like a bot. But as I was talking to that person, they said I violated the harassment and bullying. But I'm like, no, it told me I was spreading conspiracy theories. And that wasn't true at all. I was mocking conspiracy theories. But like the video didn't even have anything to do with it. I would, I would play it for you. But apparently it got a community guidelines violation on TikTok. I never finished trying to find it. The, the full clip is on YouTube. The full clip didn't get taken down. Just the, um, just the shorts version. Let me see if I can. Where in the fuck are my videos at on, on my Facebook page? That would be, that would be the only place it would be. Still. Past live no we want videos not live videos god damn it big tech is covering up for sound of freedom speaking of big tech elon musk making his way down to the southern border for a photo op actual <laughs> actual footage of Elon at the border. We're gonna try. We're gonna try to find this video. Got me banned. Me making fun of Ben Shapiro. See, this is this is the fool. This, I couldn't find it on Facebook. Did I not put it on Facebook? It because it like the full twenty eight minute clip is on Facebook, but not the one minute clip that got me. Is it on my Instagram? Possibly. A lot of hot trans women on my Instagram. I'll tell you that. Stop getting me aroused when I open this shit up.
Yes, here it is. Sound of Weendom. So I was able to find it on my Instagram. Here we go. This is the clip that got me banned from YouTube. You're going to feel the pain of the father taking his kids. Adult, oh, it's painful, all right. Who was approached by a recruiter saying, your kids can be models, they can be in movies. Put the kids in the room, and the girl says, come back to pick them up at 7 o'clock. He says, what do you mean? Come back to pick them up at 7 o'clock. He leaves, comes back 7 o'clock, no one's there. It's disturbing. Well, that was fucking dumb. That's how the movie starts. Well, 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 well. So this this right here is the timestamp it gave me as as the violation. Oh, the entire plot falls apart if the parents just had two fucking brain cells now, doesn't it? Don't leave your kids all day with strangers that you don't fucking know. That's goddamn dumb. But man, man, it totally took Patrick Bet David for a ride there. Cause this this dumb motherfucker would take his kids. And leave it with somebody. God damn. That's. <laughs> so that video got me a ban on YouTube. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Because that's great fucking advice. Don't be stupid. And leave your goddamn kids. With a stranger all goddamn day. That's not. That's not only not spreading conspiracy theories. That's fucking solid goddamn advice. Our team has reviewed your content, and unfortunately, we think it violates our policy on harmful conspiracy theories. We've removed the following content from YouTube. Patrick Bet David on the Sound of Freedom. That's the clip you just watched. It occurred at 33 seconds in the video. Which is the exact moment I say, don't leave your fucking kids with a stranger, you goddamn idiots. Not only did I not violate their rule, my God. I'm, I'm telling you, YouTube, it's fucking stupid. Clip this and say, oh, well, you can't clip it anymore because I'm not on Twitch because I got banned from it. God damn. We do have news to talk about. We're gonna do news tonight. I promise. I'm not just. I'm not just gonna bitch about getting banned on YouTube. And I promise. Like, if if you're watching on D Live, you're like, why aren't you live anymore, Justin? Because the service I use to send the stream out changes their price structure. I was paying for it anyway before, but when I got banned from Twitch, I turned it off. Well, they haven't had a sale. Like, uh, they'll they'll have like a, a Black Friday sale or an end of the year sale here shortly, and I'll I'll purchase it again. And I think I the cheapest one is five. I can go to five different locations, which would be YouTube, uh, Kick, Facebook Live. Where else do we want? Do we want to be D Live and? Twitter probably, but that means I can't send it out to Odyssey, but Odyssey would get the replay just as soon as YouTube processed it. I did, man, like that one night we had like a thousand people on Facebook live when we were watching that cop beat the shit out of somebody. So like, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to put my content everywhere. I, it's stupid of me not to, right? Because I do this shit, so I should repurpose it and put it in other places. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all that good shit. <laughs> how, how the leftist has fallen. Apparently, I'm not a leftist. Apparently, I'm a corporate dim bootlicker, warlord. I'm a corporate dim bootlicker. Also, is that you... Are you, do you have multiple accounts? Do you troll me from other accounts? I wouldn't put it past you. I don't believe you. 
Good evening, DJ Dub Warlord. I think you guys are the only people I've seen thus far. I'm sorry, everybody else isn't isn't uh, isn't here. All the YouTube watchers. And I can't I can't make a post on YouTube and be like, hey guys, I'm not on YouTube. No, I'm just not there for a week. I can't I can't interact at all. God damn, we got news to talk about. I'm sorry I didn't it like it looked all day on Saturday like they it was gonna be smooth sailing to a a resolution long before midnight. However, that's not really the way it played out. The bill got signed before midnight. However, there was some drama. There was a holdup in the Senate. I probably should have came on on Saturday. However, I was I was enjoying a day off. I cooked. I played video games. Uh, I was going to do some work. I didn't... Uh, the British guy watched it, and the, and the U.S. guy that covers politics was like, "No, I need a break. I sh- I should have I should have done a stream, but like I like I, as I, I mentioned it, and thank you, Dustin, for checking in on me last week. I, <laughs> uh, I it's it's not the show that's wearing on me; it's everything else, right? Like my back and ass were hurting." from being in this chair for so goddamn long last week. I barely made it through the uh, Republican debate on Wednesday night. My back was killing me. Killing me. Absolutely fucking killing me. My ass was killing me. Not my asshole like my tailbone from sitting sitting in the chair. I'm getting old. Yes, I'm getting very old. So that's that's just what it was. I was just I was ready I was I was ready to be done with the show last week. I fucking love doing this. I wish this. I wish this was the only thing I had to focus on because then I would put so much more effort into it. And but you know I've got like a whole other job I do on top of this, which is like a full time job as it is. Boomer Schiller, indeed. I want to get to the point where I can shill. Man, get me up to where I've got like a fucking a hundred people watching the live. I'll start fucking shilling commercials and shit. I might be close. If I hadn't got fucking banned on Twitch, I might be close at this point. God damn it. Fuck you, Twitch. I'm salty tonight. I'm salty, but we got news to do. Oh, but just like. I've been, I've been feeling maybe it's about a depression, you know, who knows? Um, fuck Twitch indeed. But like, ultimately, like the things that piss me off is like Maynard yells at me too early in the morning and wakes me up. I live a good life. I sit around getting high and playing video games all the time. Fuck you, pal. Fuck you. This motherfucker, he was he was drinking on Friday night, and he's like seven or eight deep talking about how he ain't drunk or anything. He's fucking rambling like a motherfucker. It's like three o'clock in the morning. And like he's he's not hitting the button to fucking play another fucking fight. He's just rambling about something. And he like he gets all upset. I just fucking cut him because I'm like, hey, you're boring the shit out of me. And just cut him off. <laughs> he just like sends me five messages. Like, hey, fuck you, pal. I was pontificating on something. And I'm like, you were boring the shit. You were drunk rambling, pontificating my ass. So, like, I am like, I don't know if I'm having some sort of existential crisis. Like, I'm 40 fucking years old almost. Like, if, if, if is this all that my life is going to be? Because if so, like, I still like, it's pretty cool that I can support myself working from home in my living room. But also, like, I I kind of expected more. You know, it, it's that sort of thing. Is it is like what what am I working to at this point in time? I don't even fucking know. Let me host the late show. I want to host it. That maybe that's my that's my fucking goal. By the time I'm fifty, 
I want to be I want to be Stephen Colbert's successor. You're saying that the late night genre is getting tired. It's trite, it's out of date. It needs it needs somebody to come in and reinvent the wheel. Also, TV's dying, so why not take a chance on Justin? Right, the Late Show with Justin Freakin. What do you think? What do you think? Sound good? I don't, like, I, I wouldn't want the Tonight Show. I don't think because I didn't come up on the Tonight Show. I came up on David Letterman. Any fuck it, we got news to cover. I know what that news be doing. Matt Walsh, who once who once called me a formidable voice in the culture. Justin Freakin is a formidable voice in the culture. God damn. That little possum. Very true. I'm probably not making it to 80. I've lived hard. If I if I hit 65, that's probably gonna be pretty good. And that's, that's scary to think about, that I'm that fucking close. Or any of us making it to 80. Well, I mean, like, if you're, if you're 75 now, you're probably gonna make it to 80. But, like, we're coming up on, like, total societal collapse 20 years from now? It's a probably, probably my life, um... Mallow Possum already expecting to be at my funeral. Expects to outlive me. However, he's the one that's out here on, like, you're going back and forth, taking the kids to school and baseball practice and shit. I don't know. Does one of them play baseball? I don't fucking know. But whatever, the, you know, you're running kids around on the road all the time. I sit in my living room. Like what, what number three cause of death in the country is car crash? Come the fuck on, dude. Who who has the higher risk of dying? Am I gonna die on my couch? Possibly. Possibly. Thought I was having a heart attack the other day, but it was just gas. That happens more often than I care to admit, too. I think I'm having a heart attack, and then I fart a whole bunch, and my chest stops hurting. It's just gas. People in the crowd, they're like, fuck, we came for the news. What the fuck are you ranting about? Matt Walsh. You know, let me go back to doing the bit here. Matt Walsh, you once called me a formidable voice in the culture. Justin Freakin is a formidable voice in the culture. We'll get to the fire alarm. We've got we got multiple clips of the fire. The ride is obsessed with the fire alarm. AOC has to respond to the fire alarm. Trying to tell you that Matt Walsh, who once called me a formidable voice in the culture, was eliminated from Dancing with the Stars, and apparently there was some controversy. So I hadn't brought that up. Matt Walsh, the the bigoted uh, host of the Daily Wire, has been training for his appearance on Dancing with the Stars. We're gonna watch a little bit of his training, then we're gonna we're gonna delve into the controversy after he got eliminated. Of course, he got eliminated. You think the bigot can fucking dance? Viral video that has been going around the internet showing a pastor locking himself uh, in a cage with a bunch of lions was apparently not real. Well, the, 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 well, the video's real, but it's not really a pastor locking himself in a cage full of lions to prove his belief in God or some shit. I got a wild video of this old dude getting out with like a bladed glove. That's the way the, that's the way the news article describes a bladed glove. Like an Edward Scissor Hands, maybe a Freddy Krueger type of deal going on. A bladed glove. Maybe like a Wolverine. like a, Kind of like a Wolverine thing going on. In Tennessee, a disgraced former sheriff deputy... Shot and killed a salesperson 
that they said they thought was a hitman coming to take them out. We've got wild video from both Spain and Turkey. Why did I put the two together? The two things have nothing to do with each other. I, there, I, there's no way to tie this. It, we've got video of both. And they're both in different countries in the U.S. That's the only thing that ties these two stories together. I don't, I, there's no way for me. I got to separate it now. Hold on. In Turkey, we've got video of a suicide bomber. In Spain, we've got video of a nightclub uh, burning the fuck down. In New York, we got video of a whole bunch of flooding. A state of, of, an, of, of, of uh, a state of emergency declared in New York amid catastrophic flooding. Insane video. We got a carrot boycott going on in California. Speaking of California, they've got a open Senate seat following the death of Diane Feinstein. Somebody who's not dead, however, is Jimmy fucking Carter, who celebrated his 99th fucking birthday today. And we're going to wish him a happy birthday because he's a badass. Jimmy Carter, a presidential name from the past. You know, uh, you know who else has a presidential name from the past? One Mr. Kennedy. Kennedy. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. now says that he will run as an independent, and I am here for it. That's the best news I've heard in a long time. What's not the best news I've heard in a long time is that Trump supporters are highly likely to try to kill people. And I believe it because I've, I've seen what, like, Mike Cernovich and Tim Poole have been saying on Twitter, and their followers are stupid. Speaking, speaking of people with stupid followers, I talk about Trump's possible pick for running mate. The Fox News piece, so they might have a little insight. Uh, Trump gave us a Biden impression while he was out on the campaign trail. Oh, Marjorie Taylor Greene's boyfriend flipped out. Somebody was asking him about, I believe it was uh, the Scott Hall. Hey, yo. The Scott Hall guilty plea in Georgia. The first guilty plea in the in the uh, election interference case. All that and a lot freaking more tonight on the Troll Patrol live. Old Dad. Old Dad. Good evening. Welcome in, my friend. Who you calling a coward, though? Oh, nothing. Just being banned on on YouTube. Your name's kind of triggering to me because my I knew my dad as the old man. Ah, shit. Yeah, he was a... <laughs> they're, no, they're like baby lions. They're so fucking cute. I would go in and... But with, that's later on in the show. That's, that's, that's so much later on in the show. That's in the bullshit segment. Like when all the when all the good Brit kids go to bed. Right, Warlord? We gotta talk about the pressing news of the day. Uh, I, guess, I guess it's... I guess it's politics. Uh, this this young lady here is a badass standout in Congress. She is the Congresswoman from Texas, Jasmine Crockett, going to explain what the what the negotiations were like for the Democrats in the House. No, Jimmy Carter is not dead. Jimmy Carter celebrating his goddamn birthday today. Jasmine Crockett. Welcome to you, Congresswoman. Um, just so we have it on the record, you were an affirmative vote for this continuing resolution? Absolutely. And you supported it. So when, what was the conversation when Democrats 
first learned of this continuing resolution, a uh, clean CR, if you will, <laughs> from the House Republicans. Okay, so your air quotes said it all. Um, for us, we were like, we don't trust anything that Kevin has to say, so we don't know what his definition of clean is, mm -hmm. so we need to check this. And so, you know, they were upset. They didn't want to give us adequate time to review. Unlike the Republicans, we weren't just going to allow 71 pages to fall in our lap and then take a vote and go back to our constituency and say, well, we didn't realize because we trusted what Kevin McCarthy said. So there were different maneuvers that were employed. Yeah, he probably got herpes. To make sure that our team had some sort of time to review this. And so you all, you all feel comfortable and with what was in this continuing resolution. I think it was the best solution for the American people to make sure that we could keep government open, absolutely. So there's been a lot of conversation. Obviously, now it goes to the Senate, but you just heard me ask um, NBC's Julie Serkin about this motion to vacate. I often hear... Uh, this was right after the vote last friends, night. ...other folks who are asking, members of Congress saying, well, are the Democrats going to save Kevin McCarthy? It's my understanding the Democrats are, have lo been lock and step behind uh, you all's leader, uh, Minority Leader Jeffries. Is, has there been any conversation amongst the caucus about a motion to vacate? There is no conversation amongst us. That is a Republican problem. And <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, we are doing everything that we can to make Kevin McCarthy look like he is somewhat competent by making sure that when there is Ouch. an opportunity on the table, we absolutely do that if it puts the American people first. His job is not my concern. And here's the deal. Kevin McCarthy literally needs to find a spine. He needs to tell them, if you gonna hop, then go ahead and hop and file your motion. But instead, what he allows Matt Gates to do is basically treat him like he his little puppet on a string and it's like and he's pulling the strings if god damn i love her but the reality is that there is no one in that caucus that has the votes so if it's not kevin mccarthy i know who has a lot of strong votes standing behind him so it's kevin or it's hakeem my vote is for hakeem so we can do another 15 rounds 16 rounds or whatever but ultimately what we will see again is that there is no one else that has the votes all right so uh speaker Amerta. uh um <laughs> Speaker Pelosi. Marta Pelosi noted that Democrats should not bail out yeah. uh, Kevin no, McCarthy, no, no, no. and it sounds like Democrats are lock and step behind that. You talk, Speaker McCarthy, uh, he just gave some comments, and he had a lot of things to say about Hunter Biden, um, Joe Biden, as it related to impeachment. It, it seemed quite disjointed <laughs> to me. You sit on the House Oversight Committee. Uh, you actually went viral this week because, yeah, did you, first of all, did you bring any props with you today? Do you <laughs> Have any exhibits or any I, evidence I you'd like to enter? I don't have any evidence today. Okay. Um, I just want to play <laughs> some. Kind of like they're hearing. Yeah. Well, I want to play some comments oh. from the impeachment hearing, quotes for the hearing earlier okay. this week. <laughs> But I will tell you what the president has been guilty of. He has unfortunately been guilty of loving his child unconditionally. And that is the only evidence that they have brought forward. And honestly, on, I hope and pray that my parents love me half as much as he loves his child. Until I don't. Some evidence, we need to get back to the people's work, which means keeping this government open so that people don't go hungry in the streets of the United States. I really feel like that Democrats on the House Oversight Committee this go round, y'all really came to play from you to um, Maxwell oh, Frost Max to, I mean, AOC. Yeah, what, what was the strategy here? <laughs> this new generation's <laughs> got some backbone. That they are inept and that this was nothing but another distraction that the Republicans wanted to put in front of the American people. So they thought that maybe if we make Joe Biden look like he's half as corrupt as Trump, then maybe the people won't care about the fact that the government is shut down because that's a bigger issue. And unfortunately, again, for them, they were outgunned. Uh, we have a ton of talent. Our bench is deep on the Democratic side. And so while I, I still haven't really figured out why my clip went viral, everyone brought it in that committee. And I just wish if you got some extra time, people need to sit down. Oh, we watched it. Raskin, AOC, they were all on fire and watch all of us because it was like a masterclass and what it should look like
to serve in the House. And if we are going to deal with impeachment, I need the Republicans to understand that we are not going to play with this. Democrats seemingly are constantly saying we will stand for what is right and we will stand against what is wrong and it doesn't matter your par party affiliation while they're over here playing political games and at the same time as i stated there we have people that are gonna go hungry in the streets there's and work to be done there's work to be done were you all surprised that republican witnesses that were called for this impeachment inquiry hearing um basically said that there was no there there for impeachment just yet i, I wasn't surprised We've been going through this. My very first hearing was actually on Hunter Biden's laptop. That was our very first hearing. So now Sounds they're pressing to the American people. Correct. Right. And so we've been going through hearings for months and they've come up by laptop. She means dick laptop. Hunter Biden's dick. That's what that that's what that uh, hearing was about. But let's get back to the fighting between the Republicans Matt Gates, motherfucking Matt Gates was on one of the morning shows on ABC this week. Content warning for this gigantic fucking forehead. I was Republican Congressman Matt Gates of Florida, who has been Speaker Kevin McCarthy's chief antagonist in all of this. So I want to start right with what you've been saying all along. Uh, that you would uh, move to oust him as Speaker, and what McCarthy said just yesterday. I'm here for it. That's all right if Republican and Democrats join together to do what is right. If somebody wants to make a motion against me, bring it. There has to be an adult in the room. So are you going to do it? Or are you going to move to oust him? Kevin McCarthy's going to get his wish. I don't think the adult in the room would allow America to sit atop a $33 trillion debt facing $2.2 trillion annual deficits. I don't think the adult in the room would allow $8 trillion of this debt to come into refinancing at a higher level without serious spending cuts. And I don't think the adult in the room would lie to House conservatives. And that is exactly what Kevin McCarthy did. In January, to get the speakership, Kevin had to agree to certain guardrails on spending. And he had to agree to a process that would allow us to put some downward pressure on spending. Since the mid 90s, this country has been governed by revolving continuing resolution and omnibus spending bill. And what that means is that America's lawmakers take one up or down vote on the funding of the entire government. That is crazy. That is the reason we're 33 trillion in debt. We wanna to move to single subject spending bills. So he made the reason there's a continuing resolution is because they can't fucking agree on a budget. You can't get anything that passes the House and the Senate. So they just say, oh, continue funding the government at its current level. That's just what they've been doing. They've been doing that since the end of the Trump era. That was one of the reasons why, like, fucking uh, right-wingers talk about the economy under Trump. I'm like, well, what, what did he do different? There was, like, a continuing resolution from, like, 2017 on just passing the same fucking funding might have been 2018 after the uh democrats took over in the in the house in the midterm he made that commitment he broke it and if at this time next week kevin mccarthy is still speaking yeah, because the they got their pa they, because, their maybe tax maybe cuts the in 2017 out and he can be their speaker not mine so so when, when do you make this move uh, you'll be seeing it this week. This week, okay. That's now, why I came on the show this now, week. Now, now, look, it, it takes only one person, obviously, you, uh, to, to call for a vote uh, to remove him, so-called uh, motion to vacate. But you would need a majority to remove him, which means you're going to need de Democrats to remove him. Do you really think that Democrats are going to vote to remove Kevin McCarthy because he made a deal with Democrats? No. I actually think Democrats are going to bail out Kevin McCarthy. So this is an exercise to show the American people who really governs you and how that governing occurs. So I'm on a mission to change it where we're evaluating these bills independently. Kevin McCarthy is off making a secret deal on Ukraine as he's baiting Republicans to vote for a continuing resolution that doesn't include Ukraine. So the one thing Democrats, Republicans, the White House that we all have in common is that, Dem is that Kevin McCarthy at one point or another has lied to all of us. But if they want to keep him, then he belongs to them. But so, so you're not accomplishing anything here. I mean, that's it, not true. Well, well you, you, you don't have the votes to remove him. Well, so. I don't, I, by the way, I don't know until we have him. And by the way, I might ha not have him the first time, but I might have him before the 15th ballot. That's the number of ballots Kevin McCarthy needs. So, so are you going to do this every day like you had suggested? Or are you going to like go, go through this? process of voting over and over and over again i am relentless and yes, I that's is is the motion to vacate 
a like is it a positive thing like you remove Kevin McCarthy or is it just a new vote on the speaker like we saw what back in January or February like I, I don't know do you vote yes remove the speaker or do we just have a new round of voting because if so like the Democrats will just vote for Hakeem Jeffries I will continue to pursue this objective. And if all the American people see is that it is a uniparty that governs them and that it is always the Biden, McCarthy, Jeffries government that makes dispositive decisions on spending, then I am I am seeding the fields of future primary contests to get better Republicans in Washington who will actually tackle these deficits and debts. I mean, if you somehow succeed after multiple tries, I mean, who would be the speaker? Uh, well, we have a lot of t it, look. We have a lot of talented people in our conference. Obviously, it's it's a it's an awkward discussion while our number two, Steve Scalise, is in treatment for yeah. blood cancer. So it's I'm not going to pass somebody over because they're getting a medical treatment. I want to I want to see how Steve Scalise comes out of that. All right, I, I want you to listen to what Hakeem Jeffries said after the. Oh, broadcast. Kevin's new boss. Let's okay, hear from him. It was a victory for the American people and a complete and total surrender by right-wing extremists who throughout the year have tried to hijack the Congress. I guess you agree with you agree with part of that. You well, agree it was a total surrender? No, it wasn't a surrender by, by the MAGA wing. We lost. A defeat is not a surrender. There were 90 Republicans who voted against this bad deal, and we did not prevail because here's what I've observed in the 118th Congress. On matters of frivolity or messaging bills, Kevin McCarthy is fine partnering with House conservatives. But whenever it comes to the money, right, the debt limit, the budget process, Kevin McCarthy's true coalition partner is Hakeem Jeffries. But, but I, I, I want to, you, you face some criticism from fellow conservatives on this who say that you are the one that basically kneecapped McCarthy because he tried to do a bill that included changes in border policy. He tried to do a, 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 a bill that would have cut some spending. This is what Eric Erickson uh, said after the bill passed. Conservatives got the whole of the House GOP to agree to cut the government by 8% as their opening negotiation with the Senate. But Matt Gates decided his grudge against Speaker McCarthy was more important, so he helped scuttle cuts and now the government is going to grow. They're saying this is your fault. The cuts I were mean, illusory. I mean, he, he, that was a mirage. The, the Biden administration had already put out a statement of administration policy that they were going to veto that. The Senate had already said they weren't going to take it up. So this is about what turf we battle on to reduce spending. I do not believe that we will ever reduce spending if the manner of negotiation is just what is the condition or the ornament that we're going to hang on to a continuing resolution. Since the mid-90s, this government has been ruled by continuing resolution or omnibus bill. That's why we're 33 trillion in debt. My plan to go- That's not why we're 33 trillion in debt. Would actually allow us to put that downward pressure. And I acknowledge that in divided government, you have to work with Senate Democrats. You have to work with the White House, but I don't think but, you should work with them on a continuing resolution or an omnibus bill. You should make those Senate Democrats have to take up our defense bill to give troops a raise, take up our Homeland Security bill to make changes at the border, take up our veterans bill. And if they did those things, Things, people would have to vote on specific programs rather than just saying, oh, well, you know, I voted for the government funding bill and sure there's some stuff at the Department of Education I don't like, but I had to be there for the veterans. So, 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 so I know you say this is not personal with Kevin McCarthy, but it sure sounds personal. You, I, I'm you, you're talking you, about substantive okay, de-dollarization. But, 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 but let me ask you about the relationship. De-dollarization? Talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, have you had a... Well, a matter of fact, just a couple weeks ago, Kevin McCarthy appointed me to the National Defense Conference Committee on the NDAA, and we spoke about some of our aligned defense priorities. So this isn't personal. Some people make policy disagreements personal because their own policy failures are so personally embarrassing to them. I hold no personal animus to any uh, with any of my Republican colleagues. By the way, including my Republican colleague you're about to have on next, who's had some pretty terse words for me. But at the end of the day, this is about spending. This is about the deal, Kevin. This motherfucker is going to be around for a long time, isn't he? We're going to have to deal with Matt Gates for like another decade or two. God.
been made in January. I do resent the fact that Kevin is like owned by lobbyists and special interests. That sounds that's, personal. By no, the way. it's not. It's not personal. It's that's substantive. an attack on the guy's integrity. Well, it it, it is an attack. No, I'd say you. I'd say you'll get Senator Gates at some point in time. I'm fighting for a different system, right. one based on spending guardrails, agreements on process. Kevin promised us 72 hours to read the bill. We didn't have it. He promised us 100 million dollars wouldn't go onto the suspension agenda without the opportunity for amendments. Broke that deal too, and he promised us we to return to pre-COVID spending levels. Th there is almost no promise right. he hasn't violated. He probably has his side set Thank on the presidency. This morning. Thank you. Hi, everyone. What's up, George? That's a man with some high aspirations, I'm going to tell you. And I wouldn't be surprised if he, he... He will be the senator from Florida before the end of the decade. Jamal Bowman is responding to, and I don't even know, I've, I have been completely oblivious to the news. I know he pulled the fucking alarm. Jamal Bowman pulled a fire alarm. It was about 1130, I believe, in the morning in some sort of attempt to try to delay the house proceedings. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. And I do want to get to the latest on another story that we have been following, all related to this, as Democratic Representative Jamal Bowman acknowledged triggering a fire alarm Saturday in one of the U.S. Capitol office buildings, as lawmakers did scramble to pass a bill to fund the government before that midnight shutdown. Why? The fire alarm sounded out around noon in the Cannon House office building and prompted a building-wide evacuation at a time when the house was in session and staffers were working in the building. The building was reopened an hour later after Capitol Police determined it was not a threat. The GOP-controlled House Administration Committee, which does oversee issues pertaining to the Capitol complex, posted this picture right here on your screen of a person pulling the fire alarm who did appear to be Bowman. Now, the New York lawmaker told reporters hours later that it was a mistake and he was rushing to get to votes and was trying to get through a door that is usually open but was closed due to it being a weekend. Now, he did release a statement here just last night. I do want to show it to you. Uh uh, that doesn't sound right. I want to personally clear up confusion surrounding today's events. Today, as I was rushing to make a vote, I came to a door that is usually open for votes, but today would not open. I'm embarrassed to admit that I activated the fire alarm, mistakenly thinking it would open the door. I regret this and sincerely apologize for any confusion this caused. But I want to be very clear. This was not me in any way trying to delay any vote. It was the exact opposite. I was trying urgently to get to a vote, which I ultimately did and joined my colleagues in a bipartisan effort to keep our government open. I also met after the vote with the sergeant at arms and the Capitol Police at their request and explained what had happened. My hope is that no one will make more of this than it was. I am working hard every day, including today, to do my job, to do it well, and deliver for my constituents. Now, we have been told by Capitol Police that they are working to investigate this situation. If we do get updates on that, we'll bring it to you live, raw, and unfiltered, as we do on Live Now from Fox. I guess he thought, like, I could see how somebody could think that the fire alarm would cause a door to unlock. But you, you, you'd have to know they'd have to evacuate because of the alarm. It's what a what a stupid fucking thing. I'm upset at just the the idiocy that we that we talk about in in our body politic in this country. AOC even asked about it. Earlier today on State of the Union with what Jake Tapper. There was an interesting moment uh, over the weekend when you're interesting indeed. Bowman, and he's under investigation for this now after Capitol Police say he pulled a fire alarm in one of the House office buildings. Democrats were trying to delay a vote, a final vote on the bill. Uh, there he is uh, pulling the fire alarm. He says it was. An no, 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 no. He, he's not saying that he was confused about 
thinking it was a door handle. He's saying that he thought that triggering the fire alarm would unlock the door that he needed to get in. I can, I can totally see that. But like, he would have to know, like, they're gonna evacuate. This is going to cause a, a panic. I, you know, I, I want to give him the benefit of a doubt, but that's a stupid fucking move. But no, like, he's not saying that he thought that was the door handle. That's not what the statement said. And if right-wingers are trying to say that, that's goddamn dumb. But right-wingers are morons, and they're doing their best to try to uh, take the spotlight off of their failure as a caucus. Be like, oh, look, look, he pulled the fire alarm. Even AOC had to answer for him. An accident, he thought pulling the alarm would open a door uh, based on the fact that the doors to his right there were locked and there was a sign that he said he was, con I think someone said it was confusing. I I'll be honest, uh, it doesn't really make sense to me, his explanation. Have you talked to him? Yeah. What's going on? I mean, listen, I think if you actually do see some of the photos of the signs, I think there's there's something to be said about the government's about to shut down. There's a vote clock that's going down. The exits that are normally open in that building were suddenly closed. So he, you pulled a fire alarm? So I'm... I'm There's clearly I'm a fire alarm. That House administration and U.S. Capitol Police and Jamal Bowman are an active and he's fully participating in saying there was a misunderstanding. But what I do think is important to raise is the fact that Republicans, representatives like Nicole Maliotakis and others, immediately moved to file motions to censure, motions to expel, before there, before there has even been conversations that are that are finished to even see if there was a misunderstanding here. But what they did do, while they did that, what they did not do was to commit to the same when George Santos was actually found guilty after a thorough investigation of 13 federal charges. He's indicted on everything from wire fraud to actual lying of, of House investigators. And they have been buddying up and giggling with him on the House floor, and they are protecting someone who has lied to the American and all the Congress people that were involved in January 6 that are still uh, a part of the house Jim Jordan is the chairman of, of uh, what the oversight committee god damn people lied to the United States House of Representatives lied to congressional investigators but they're fire uh, filing a motion of to expel a member who in a moment of panic was trying to escape a vestibule give me a break and so the idea that the word of the day vestibule equivalence to someone who is actively trying to clear up a situation that he himself admits he's embarrassed. He released a statement last night. He apologized and they are protecting someone who has not only committed wire fraud, not only defrauded veterans, not only lied to congressional investigators, but is openly gloating about it is absolutely humiliating to the Republican caucus. And I think that they should really check their own values. There's another Republican. They need to learn to feel embarrassment. ...that they've been defending, but we, we don't, but we don't have the time to go into all of those uh, charges, 91 of them. Indeed. But they're entertaining. I like, you gotta love the Republicans for the fact that like, would my show be as good if they weren't as dumb as what they are? I'm, I'm, like, Joe Manchin is going to get defeated next year in his Senate race. And Jim Justice will be the senator from West Virginia. Bad for the country. Good for me. Jim Justice, the uh, governor of West Virginia that <laughs> told Bette Midler to kiss his dog's ass. Okay, so speaking of crazy Congress people, Marjorie Taylor Greene's boyfriend, the... Reporter for Right Side Broadcasting apparently went off on somebody 
heckling Trump uh, at a, after a rally in Santa Monica. Donald, why is there only a hundred people here? I thought you were popular. Why are you? The- why are you? Are you? Hey, hey, go home. Hey, are you, are you an idiot or what? He is an idiot. He's at a Donald Trump rally. He's a fucking idiot. What are, what are you doing here? What are you, what, you don't think it's popular? This guy's an idiot, President Trump. This guy's an idiot. I'm going to throw his ass out of here. I'm going to throw his ass out of here. He's an idiot. All right, let's get over. Some guy. All right. That's all right. Some guy, well, some guy was heckling in there. Look at the support you have here in California. It's amazing. People are lying in the streets. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. God bless you. We, we support you. You know that. You know that. Thank you. Very God bless you. I don't even know his name. We've watched so much of him here on this very channel. I don't even know his name. I know him as Marjorie Taylor Greene's boyfriend. Brian Glenn. Brian Glenn. Wanted to throw the heckler out himself. Apparently Trump got several questions. Uh that were either scathing or people heckling him in the background. Did you overstate the value of your property, sir? What about Scott Paul? Is that a coward? Why did you overstate the size of your Trump Tower apartment by 20,000 square feet? Why can't you, can you remember it? Why do you read that? Wait, so why did can't you, you remember it? So why did you overstate the size of your apartment by 20,000 square feet? Oh, 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 oh. You said your financial statements just to you, by the way. It's a big deal. My financial statements are much lower than the actual net worth. Donald, this judge, and your fake attorney general. No, no, no. You have been found to be inflating your your worth, sir. Like uh, this is in a court of law that you've been inflating your worth when it comes to uh, trying to get loans from from banks. And that you have been deflating your worth when it comes to tax time. General of New York, who's driving business out, who's letting murderers run all over the city. They don't do anything to murderers that are running all over the city. The attorney general is a racist, Letitia James. She ought to be ashamed. Is there a murderer loose in in Atlanta? I was not aware of this because you know me. I love a, I love a good manhunt. We follow him here on this stream. <laughs> but you heard that I believe it was a reporter asked about Scott Hall pleading guilty in Trump's Georgia election interference case. Hall is the first of 18 co-defendants to plead guilty to tampering with electronic voting machines in Coffee County. Scott Hall, hey yo. A bill bondsman accused of willfully tampering with electronic voting machines in Coffee County, Georgia, during the 2020 election process, is the first of 18 co-defendants in Donald Trump's election interference case to plead guilty to his involvement in the situation. According to CNBC, Hall pleaded guilty on Friday in Atlanta to five misdemeanor conspiracy charges entering into a plea deal that puts him up against five years of probation, a five grand fine, and 200 hours of community service in exchange for his testimony in the case. In addition, Scott Hall, AEO, has been asked by Judge Scott McAfee to write a letter of apology I agree. Razor Ramon would never do such a... He was an honest bad guy. A, write a letter of apology. What, like, I had to write several letters of apology when I was in, like, fucking high school. I, like, w- w- like a fucking teacher from the grade school was behind me in a football game. They made me write a letter of apology for my foul fucking mouth. <laughs> there, the court is making Scott Hall a hey, yo write a letter of apology for attempting to overthrow the like. I'm sorry, I tried to overthrow the presidential election of the United States of America. Dumbest timeline. Dumbest timeline. This is... 
This is why I'm the show. I'm the show for this moment in time. The Troll Patrol is where you should get your fucking news from. Because the news is absurd. They're trolling us with this shit. Write a, write a letter of apology to the state of Georgia for attempting to overthrow the election. As the Guardian points out in their coverage of Hall's cooperation in the case, the surprise move from him came after he gave a recorded statement, it was revealed in court, to prosecutors who are almost certain to use that testimony against the former Trump lawyer, Sidney Powell, when she goes to trial later this month, accused of several of the same crimes. Uh, we had the GOP presidential primary debate uh, just the other day. Trump apparently already announcing that he will be skipping the third GOP Republican. G GOP, that's redundant. The Republican presidential primary debate. It's a mouthful, I'm sorry. Ago, Trump campaign advisor Chris Lasavita told NBC News former President Trump will not attend the next Republican debate in November. That comes after last night's debate, where some of the loudest criticisms of Mr. Trump weren't focused on his record or his mounting legal troubles, but I hate it. I want him there. I want it. it's so much more entertaining with him. Rather, his decision not to attend. You know who else is missing in action? Donald Trump is Donald Duck on this stage tonight. He owes it to you to defend his record where they added 7.8 trillion to the debt. That set the stage for the inflation that we have. Donald Trump should be here to answer for that, but he's not. And I want to look at that camera right now and tell you, Donald, I know you're watching. You can't help yourself. I know you're watching, okay? And you're not here tonight not because of polls and not because of your indictments. You're not here tonight because you're afraid of being on the stage and defending your record. You're ducking these things. And let me tell you what's going to happen. You keep doing that. He's so proud of himself. Trump anymore. We're going to call you Donald Duck. I hate it. One Fuck you, Chris Christie. From the night back with it was the stupid. Swan, Cornell Belcher, and Lonnie Chen. Lonnie, let me get you. There's a lot to break down. Yeah. <laughs> let me get you first, just your reaction to this news. The Trump campaign saying he's not going to attend. That's what they're saying today. Of course, ultimately, the decision will be up to former President yeah. Trump, and he sometimes I, changes his mind. But I think he won't attend. Uh, it's what I expected. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes a lot of sense after last night's debate. I don't know if you're Donald Trump, <laughs> there's any reason to go to a debate like that. Uh, I, I had sort of thought, I wondered if his ego would allow him to stay out. Given Just because it's more fun. At some point he would have fun doing it. Myself. I'd have fun watching it. Obviously, I think the right political move. It's the right move given where the campaign stands and given the fact that he's got like a 50 point lead. Yeah. yeah. No strategic. Agreed. But it would be more fun with him in it. He would have fun. That's that's my thought process on it, that he wouldn't be able to miss out because he'd have so much fun doing it. I've been wrong on that one, I guess. Now, I've also... Uh, could I be wrong on who I think he's going to pick as his vice presidential nominee? All along, I've said Marjorie Taylor Greene. He needs to win the state of Georgia. She is a candidate from the state of Georgia. That is conventional political wisdom that you pick. You pick a politician from the state that you need to win. He absolutely needs to win Georgia in order to carry the presidency in 2024. He wants to pick a woman because it would like, you know, it's, it's, it's a, and that's a woke move. That's such a, like that, but John McCain did it as a woke move. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. You got a virtue signal. And that's why he's going to pick a woman. Or a black man. He's gonna he's gonna pick some sort of uh, uh, token. Mike Pence was a token to the Christian base. So I'm going with Marjorie Taylor Greene, and she has been angling for it, in my opinion. 
Who's everybody in chat think he's going to pick for his vice presidential candidate? How to do that, Byron York, chief political correspondent for the Washington Examiner and Fox. The Chiron says Newt Gingrich, the GOP primary is over. Trump is the nominee. And yeah. <laughs> is contributor and Horace Cooper, author and legal commentator. All right, Byron, let's start with you. Who's a really good pick right now? If you had to pick one VP for Trump, who would it be? Uh, if I picked one, I would probably pick Sarah Huckabee Sanders. She's the governor of Arkansas. No. White House veteran. Uh, no, no other. This dude's no stupid, this Jerry Springer that. looking really motherfucker. A really good choice for President Trump. I don't even have okay. MTG up there. That is interesting. Sarah Sanders, obviously very young, knows the president very well. We know that he respects her. Idiots. Uh, greatly. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, I actually think Youngkin would be a better running mate. Uh, if you pick up Virginia. And no. With him on the ticket, you're very likely to carry Virginia. And that would mean you wouldn't need to worry about a state like Wisconsin in terms of electoral votes. You must figure out a way to grow the support on election day, and that's one way to do it. All right. Well, you have a three picks up there. We're going to get to each one. But, Byron, one of Horace's uh, choices you saw up on the screen was Nikki Haley. Who no, Nikki Haley. Like, I don't think they like each other. Of course, uh, UN uh, ambassador, and they had a very good working relationship. But I don't think they did, did they? Of the, you know, the philosophy in the Republican Party today, no doubt. But what he was about UN that? ambassador well, under Trump. Uh, as you said, she's one of my picks too. Is as you said, the pros are she's very, very experienced, both in domestic uh, governing and policy and in international affairs. So that's a big deal. The the con, of course, is she's running against Trump and criticizing Trump. But she hasn't been that super critical of Trump, and, and politicians can get over that sort of thing. And besides, Trump kind of likes it when someone who's been very critical of him has to come around and maybe kiss the ring and be uh, 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 work for him. So, uh, yes, she is from a different wing of the Republican Party, but they're out there, too, and they do vote. And giving them a reason to vote for Donald Trump uh, uh -huh. against they might not vote for otherwise is not a terrible idea. So you're saying it mollifies some of the concerns of the establishment types who are still very worried about President Trump's electability. I understand that. Let's move on to some cabinet picks. Horace, the boy. I, like, I am so in disagreement with them. Because this time around, I don't think... I don't think the political decision is coming into it as much. Like, there aren't as many traditional campaign advisors around him. This is more Trump just going like going with what he likes. And I like I bet he likes Marjorie Taylor Greene. I bet he would grope Marjorie Taylor Greene. I bet he has groped Marjorie Taylor Greene. He had some kind of Biden impression that he pulled out uh, during his little speech he made in California over the weekend. Become crooked Joe Biden's top surrogate, I think, because he doesn't think Biden is going to make it. That's why he's doing it. He doesn't think on, he's going to make it, and it won't be him so easy. He's going to have a big fight. However, because there will be a lot of Democrats uh, competing. I assume he's talking about Gavin Newsom since they're in California. Look, some people say Biden's going to make it. Does anybody think he's going to make it to the starting gate? I mean, the guy can't find his way off of a stage. Look, here's a stage. Here's a stage. I've never seen this stupid stage before, right? I've never seen it. But if I walk left, there's a stair. And if I walk right, there's a stair. And this guy gets up. Where am I? Where the hell am I? Where am I? Nah, he's terrible. Terrible. 
You know, I'm much tougher on him than I used to be. Out of respect for the office, I was never like. He's the most corrupt president. Please. Most incompetent president. Please. But when they indicted me, and then again. The literal most corrupt, most inept president we've had said that about somebody else. Just insane. And like. That screenshot says it all. And and again and again, I was never indicted. Now I'm setting records. Al Capone (laughs) was not indicted so much. Alphonse Capone. If you looked at Al Capone in the wrong way, he'd kill you. He was not indicted like me. I was never indicted. I didn't know when they taught me at the Wharton School of Finance, they didn't talk about indictment. It's, no, it's a disgrace what's happening. They've weaponized elections, they've done everything. I mean, these are very bad people. But I used to talk relatively nicely about them. I wouldn't go out of my way. I wouldn't say the things I say now. Now I'm just all in because these people are bad and they're dangerous and we have to stop it. I wouldn't say what I say now. I never did. I'd joke, I'd, I'd have a little fun with it, but I wouldn't call him. I call him the worst president in history. I call him the most corrupt president in history, and I call him the most incompetent president. Other than that, he's doing a fabulous job, I think, ladies and gentlemen. He's doing a fabulous job. Along with crooked Joe Biden, Newsom is also killing our car industry. Your cars are ridiculous, what's happening. And crushing our great automakers in Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, crushing them. Under his leadership, this is Newsom, California has imposed the most ridiculous car regulations anywhere in the world with mandates to move to all electric cars. The problem with an electric car, number one, you lose all your jobs because they're all going to be made in China and other countries. They're not going to be made here at all. I was up in uh, the other day in Michigan, like the other night, we had an incredible crowd. Apparently, apparently, like there were no UAW members whatsoever in the crowd and apparently a lot of the crowd wasn't even auto workers. Auto workers and and others, but we were sort of focused on the auto workers. I said, you got to endorse Trump because I'm going to save your industry. We're going to have a thriving car industry. (laughs) This lunatic is going to destroy. He's going to go all electric. Think about all electric. And I have no problem with electric. You should electric. electric You should buy a gas a fired car, you should buy a hybrid, you should buy whatever the hell you want. I mean, some people like electric. If you want to drive for 14 minutes to the candy store, electric is very good. But if you actually want to get into a car and drive for a few hours, you know, they're doing a couple of other ones with electric. They're going electric crazy. 14 Uh, minutes to the candy store. Uh, They want all electric army tanks now. Think of this. So they want to have an army tank that's electric. You can't get it recharged. It doesn't go far enough. It doesn't. Good evening. All electric army tanks. I hadn't heard that one. Oh my God. So this, this ran in Newsweek. But they are citing an analyst that was on MSNBC. Trump supporters highly likely to try to kill people in 2024 or 2024. 2024. <laughs> oh, fuck. The kind of threats that we've seen from, from Donald Trump this past week are like breathtaking, even for him, from the threat to General Milley, uh, now the former joint chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, to threats against American media with a specific social media post focused on uh, the owner of this network, Comcast, and then his continual threats against the prosecutors and judges in the various cases against him in the four jurisdictions where his 91 91 counts sit. Uh, Brian, let me start with you. Talk about this moment we're in with the leading candidate for the Republican nomination making really incredible anti-small-D Democratic threats. 
Well, it's the, it's the biggest story of the 2024 election, but it's not being treated as that in, in the press. And I think that's a, a real failing because it has become the banality of crazy incitement to violence, the sort of normalcy and routine of Trump saying things that could get people killed. And you have him, you know, suggesting that you could execute America's top general. On Friday night, he joked about Paul Pelosi being attacked and the crowd laughed when he was refer referencing, uh, a, you know, sort of an 82-year-old man being hit over the head with a hammer. Uh, he called to execute people who shoplift um, from stores. Of yeah, that was a clip from the... To take seriously, but obviously not one worthy of execution. Um, and also he from has... the speech uh, we were just watching. ...a variety of people in, in his various outlets on Truth Social and in his discussions in front of crowds. And this is related to a term called stochastic terrorism. It's an academic jargon term. But what it basically means is that when someone who's very powerful and influential targets or demonizes individual groups in the public, at least a small number of their followers will take them as marching orders. And what is highly likely going into the 2024 election is that a small subset of Trump's very well-armed and extremist base will try to kill people. And you have to remember that Caesar Sayoc, this extremist in 2018 who sent pipe bombs to people that Trump targeted on Twitter, the only reason that people didn't die was because Caesar Sayoc was bad at building bombs. It wasn't because the rhetoric was unimportant. So and the only reason January 6th didn't succeed was because it was the dumbest fucks on the planet trying to pull a coup. Like that's, that's, just, <laughs> that's the type of people who support Donald Trump and like, but they're kind of right because I've been noticing the rhetoric of the right wingers and I, I will present to you a tweet and retweet by a couple idiot ass right wingers. This is Mike Cernovich. If you're a conservative with a large platform, have you talked to your family about how you're going to be framed for a crime to killed in 2024 if Biden wins? You'll be somewhere from frame to frame for a crime to killed. He's he's laid out like a scale for you. If you think this is uh, hi, hi, uh, hyperbole, you've not been paying attention. Twenty twenty four is life or death. It's time to understand. This was retweeted by Tim Pool. People have normalcy bias and can't comprehend what actually happens to the country after they begin arresting lawyers and political opposition. These people have followings. Eight, eight, 9,000 people almost liked this fucking tweet from Tim Bull. Idiots. Fucking morons. Is Cernovich gonna... Cernovich is gonna do something dastardly in 2024. And then he's like, his followers are going to be like, oh, he's been framed. No, he's just a fucking criminal. I... We do not have the proper media to deal with any of these fucks. In a, in a move that I am applauding, it would seem that Democrat Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is actually getting ready to announce an independent 2024 run. Or it may trigger alarm bells within the Democratic Party. I don't know why, because it's the best thing that could happen to the Democratic Party. He will cipher votes or siphon votes off from off of the Republican ticket, not the Democratic ticket. I think I think it's a good thing that uh, RFK will run as an independent. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. that could potentially scramble the 2024 presidential race. No. The news website Mediaite is reporting that RFK Jr. plans to announce he will run as an independent on October 9th in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, <laughs> take this at, at face value if the report is true. You, first off, you're sitting back going, whoa. That's a huge problem. 
Uh, for? For the president. Uh, for, for President, president Biden. Biden. Why? Uh, listen, uh, anytime you have more people in this race uh, that folks have a, a choice on between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, it's problematic for Joe Biden. The, for the, Donald Trump activated so many people. We saw the highest turnout election, <clears throat> excuse me, in 100 years, mostly because of Donald Trump, not because of Joe Biden in 2020. That was a reaction to, to Donald Trump. So, again, if you've got Cornell West running on a party line, if you've got Robert Kennedy running on a party line, that's problematic for Joe Biden. What about the idea maybe that some of his views, he had unfavorable ratings with Democrats, some of his views more aligned with Republicans, so maybe it could actually hurt Donald Trump, uh, uh, you know, pull, pull in that direction. I find some very hard to believe Trump voters right now voting for the son of Bobby Kennedy yeah. uh, in America. And plus politics. those voters already have a home in the Libertarian Party, right? I think that I think this is a this is a problem. In fact, I've talked to a former head of the DNC and this before this happened and he was already concerned about the Cornel West thing and the Green Party thing. And the no labels thing too, yeah. potentially. And, well and the no labels I think is a little bit different just because I have seen the data and I happen to believe that we'll pull evenly from both parties. I may not be in the majority of that, but I, I th think there is data to, to back that up. But the DNC person was simply saying, look, go back and look at Florida. We have all know the stories. Yeah. Look at Florida in 2000. Look at Michigan in 2016. They were minuscule Republican wins, and they turned the, 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 the tide of an election. This just adds to that complexity. We've learned a lot of lessons from that, though, as Democrats. On, let's see, October 9th is when he's supposed to announce. October 8th, they will drop the holy hell of oppo uh, research on him. I mean, what, what else is care? out there, though, on yeah, Bobby Kennedy? I mean, we care? know his views. He's, you know, but like Democrats are Does it make a difference in this thing? Yeah. Democrats, it does. It, it wouldn't make a difference with Republicans. Didn't we just have a conversation about a candidate in, in Northern Virginia running for state house doing public sex tapes? I mean, <laughs> does it really matter a few folks? But it's a state legislature race. It's a little, I think that's a little different. Like, we were talking about someone running for president. One, I don't think Democrats take him seriously anyway. But I think when you oppo dump on him and make him so toxic well, that n no one, even people who are between like 15 Philly. and 20 percent mm -hmm. of people polled, take him seriously. But, but to your 90 percent of more Democrats get to know his actual views, his numbers go down. Yeah. Well, let me to ask Michael's you. Point. Can I ask you a question about what, what does this do to a, J, a Joe by or uh, Joe Manchin race? I mean, Joe Manchin is going to make a decision just for Joe Manchin's interests, not, you know, analyzing the field whatsoever. I think it's that Joe Manchin is the possible third, third, what was, what was the fucking name of the, oh, no labels, the possible no labels candidate. I, he's going to lose his Senate race. I've said it multiple times. Jim Justice is going to beat him. It's, it's like a foregone conclusion that if Jim Justice wants that Senate seat, and as, as far as I know, he does, he can't be governor again. But well, fucking... Joe Manchin has no political future whatsoever because Joe Manchin was the governor of West Virginia before he was the senator. And just the, the political winds have changed. So... Joe Manchin could be, it could be Joe Manchin, Bobby Kennedy, Cornell West, all going up against Trump and Biden. What a, oof, oof, what a, what a wild race this could be. At the end of the day, Joe Manchin's got $14 million in the bank and wants to be a player and I think runs for re-election in West Virginia. Ooh, really? Yeah, He's going to lose. I was out in West Virginia a few weeks ago with Shelly Moore Capito, I, I, bipartisan. Oh, he'll run for uh, re-election. Joe Manchin is showing up. He'll lose. Community events, going to local parades. See, it is an indication that he's looking at home and not at national. That's office. fair. That's fair. But you had me up until that last sentence, which is he's going to do what's right for Joe Manchin. He's got fourteen million dollars. He wants to be president, and he sees maybe the No Labels Avenue as a way to do that. I don't happen to think yeah, anybody in this country is yeah. clamoring for Joe Manchin to be president. Yeah. I think it'd be a disaster, but Joe Manchin probably doesn't see it that way. That's the first person I've had. By the way, it makes perfect sense. If he's working hard at home, that's a good indicator, but that's the first I've here. heard of that. There you go. You heard it here. <laughs> wow. I just, I don't like Joe Manchin. I've made that very clear, but I don't think he's stupid. And what he doesn't want to be remembered for is handing the, the torch to Trump again. Yeah. And so I don't see a world where he runs for president. And I that's, think he personally the way, likes the president. That's not a bad pitch if you want to be the president of West Virginia University. <laughs> I gave the presidency to Trump. Yeah, is, like, is, is that a play? Joe that, Manning. That is. Yeah, he's that, being, yeah. yeah. That's part. That's, that's one of the one of the possible jobs for him that folks have talked about on his way out. President of West Virginia University. There's worse places to live than Morgantown.
Speaking of living, somebody who's not is Diane Feinstein. Would you like to have a moment of silence for this, her last ever Senate vote? Mrs. Feinstein. Mrs. Feinstein, aye. This is the last time you will ever see this old bat. Mrs. Feinstein, aye. That was Thursday, September 28th at 12.51. I don't even know what time she died, but by the time I woke up on Friday, she was dead. I think the world might have been a better place because of it. But now, like, there's a whole scramble of, like, they just find her both in the chain. There's a whole scramble to, you know, does Governor Newsom, you know, replace her quickly? Like, they they, they need every vote that they, they can get. Fortunately, they were able to pass the government funding bill. While Diane Feinstein is not alive, somebody who is alive is Jimmy fucking Carter. And congratulations, happy 99th birthday to the fucking peanut farmer. There's a big birthday celebration in Georgia this weekend for our 39th president. Mark Strassman has the details. Happy birthday to you. They're celebrating a birthday in Tiny Plains, Georgia. Grab a cupcake. Jimmy Carter's birthplace 99 years ago today. Get down there and hang out as a family. You know, just be a, a, a really small private event. Um, he, he can't party like he used to uh, for his 99th birthday, so. None of us can. <laughs> right, none of us can, that's exactly right. I love you, Jimmy Carter, happy birthday. I Americans celebrate with him, Amen. the famous. And happy birthday, President Carter. And the everyday. <laughs> a Jimmy Carter happy peanut gallery birthday. of well-wishers. The White House wooden cake, 39 candles for the 39th president. It's some salute considering most Americans alive today were born after Jimmy Carter left the White House. Yeah. I moved back here to Plains. He's like the father of the town. He's the heart of the town. And we just celebrate him every day. When Carter entered hospice back in February, his family thought he had days to live. Seven months later, he's earned all this birthday. Bill Kiggin. He's modest. And, um, but... You know, he smiles, he, he likes the attention. He's proud of it. He's very proud of it. Jimmy and Rosalind Carter, now married 77 years, will celebrate the day as true Southerners with family, fried chicken, and caramel cake, his favorite. They've gotten to experience this outpouring of support over these last several months that has really been gratifying. And we also want to wish President Carter a happy birthday from all of us here at Face the Nation. God damn. Jimmy Carter is probably the best president of the last 50 years. But that's a low bar. <laughs> For 60 years, 70 years, I don't fucking know. But like, he also helped start the push towards anti-unionization. He he helped break the the railroad unions. But he also was like, we need to get off foreign oil and tighten our belts and. Uh, make sure that we don't have a, a high deficit. And the Republicans were like, nah, uh, we want to do Coke and party. And we got Ronald Reagan. And the eighties happened. We try this transition. 
Jimmy Carter was a peanut farmer, but in California, we have a boycott of carrot farmers. Carrot boycott launched in California amid a water dispute. Large carrot growers are facing off against small landowners, local residents in the Kiyoma Valley Basin of California over you groundwater know, we're, we're proud rides. to be growing in the Kiyoma Valley, uh, grow some of the best carrots in the nation, it's right here in the middle of the summer. And, uh, you know, we want to be here for decades to come. We've been here for a long time. We've done a lot of um, conservation efforts, whether it's upgrading our sprinkler pipes, our the sprinkler heads themselves, reducing the acreage. So in Cuyama Valley, California, we have two huge companies. They're actually the largest carrot producers in the world, Grimway Farms and Bolt House Farms. And they have been over pumping our groundwater. And that means that there's more groundwater being taken out of the valley than is being replenished by rainfall. And this is a valley that's entirely dependent on groundwater. And we're asking people to uh, boycott carrots because that is a way to tell these companies that we're unhappy with the way they're operating and the way they're treating a community and where they farm. Fight over carrots represents a new wave of legal carrots, challenges. Fortunately, are very, very the water rights. Users. Um, when you look at the tonnage that produces with just the, uh, the, the amount of water that carrots use, we're going to adjust and work with um, um, you know, whether it's the committees, the governments, whatever it has to, to reduce um, the water that's necessary so that we can all be here for a long time. This is pistachio farmer Lee Harrington. He's one of the small farmers being dragged into a court fight with corporate carrot growers. Farmers, you know, but the problem is they, they're, they, they've been overdrafting ever since they've been here. The bottom line is, for the last 40 years, their water's been going down, 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 down. It was a, it was a huge pool, but now it's going down, down, and the pools will be empty. No oh, climate so change. Leave. And were they, were they leaving? The Verification of the land. It's a dust bowl. It's going to turn the weeds, tumbleweeds. It's, it's, going, to, it's going to be a nightmare. Not fucking rocket science. California has more than 500 groundwater basins with 21 deemed critically overdrafted, threatening environmental, social, and economic uh, uh, policies. Those weren't the best looking carrots, I didn't think. I've seen better looking carrots. Have you guys ever seen a better looking carrot? Like this, this is a better looking carrot. It's very good for health. That's what the dad that used to do. But you should do it. You know, you know, those are, those are some damn good looking watermelons too. Lukashenko may be on to something. Give that man a carrot. I'm sorry. I see carrots, that's all I can think about. Fucking the airification of the land. California's been going through a, uh, a drought. Over the last couple of weeks. Meanwhile, up in New York, it flooded like a motherfucker. God damn. Ready for this? Uh, 
ride, man. They thought I was crazy. A state of emergency was declared. It was on Friday afternoon. A motherfucker. I don't even. Was there a storm or something off the off the coast? What's causing all this? As Mr. Flair would say. you out walking your kid in the rain? I don't know. They're probably picking him up from daycare or whatever. I guess you still got to go about your business. I would not want to be caught in any of this shit. There's like an Uber Eats or some shit. My God. You don't want you don't want to drive in that. If you can't see the road, you do not want to drive through it. That amount of water can uh, can and will sweep you away. I feel like we need to move faster. I I, I feel. I don't, I don't know if you could, if you should move faster. Yeah, they should not be driving into that. This video is wild. Yet. I would be amazed if there weren't another couple of hurricanes to hit the country. Climate change, baby. And then you got the right wingers out there like, well, it just, just rains sometimes. Stupid liberal. Has nothing to do with climate change. There's a gigantic storm. Oh, it's, just, it's just storms sometimes. You can, you can show that the intensity of hurricanes has amplified over the last like 20 years. The frequency.
Could you use some of that water and putting this fire out over in Spain? Nightclub fire killed over a dozen people. Apparently the club was called Murica. More than a dozen or maybe people Murcia. Have been killed after a fire tore through adjoining nightclubs in the Spanish city of Murcia. Emergency services okay. said on Sunday. I, I was way off. They added that rescuers were still searching for those unaccounted for after the blaze. Footage released by Murcia's fire service showed firefighters working to control the flames. <laughs> Outside the club, shocked young people hugged as they waited for information. This witness said he left moments before the alarms went off and all the lights went out. Some of his family and friends are still missing. The alarm went off. Um, have you asked Jamal Bowman where he was? He has a habit of pulling some fire alarms. <laughs> The fire broke out in the early hours in Atalayas, on the outskirts of the city. It was a bad joke, wasn't it? Spain's national police told the well, Bowman did pull up in the La Fonda alarm when there was an actual which fire. Which sustained the majority of fire damage, including the collapse of its roof. See a spokesperson out. for the Teatro nightclub told reporters the fire originated in La Fonda before spreading to the other two adjoining clubs. The cause of the blaze is being investigated. Spanish media reported several burning of the blazes is Glenn Beck. The time. Murcia's mayor, Jose Ballesta, told a Spanish TV channel the fire was now under control. Go to Istanbul, Constantinople. Suicide bomber detonated apparently like this shows the actual moments of the suicide bomber. Like, hold on. 420 Murica. Murcia. That's how she said it, I do believe. This is this is a suicide bomber detonating a device in Turkey's capital. CCTV footage. Sorry, the capital was in Istanbul. It's in Kara. God damn! It made an explosive device in the heart of the Turkish capital while a second assailant was killed in a shootout with police. The attack occurred hours before Turkey's parliament was set to reopen after a three month summer recess. And I'm sorry, not Istanbul, Ankara is the capital of Turkey. Two police officers were slightly injured during the attack near the Ministry of Interior Affairs. Turkish officials have not yet said who was behind the attack. Is President Erdogan? Bu sabah emniyet birimlerimizin vakit. As a result of the timely intervention of our security forces this morning, etkisiz hale getirildiği eylem. The action in which two murderers were neutralized is the last stand of terrorism. The scoundrels who targeted the peace and security of the citizens could not achieve their goals. They will never reach it. I'll watch it again. Our assailant. God damn. I wonder what his beef was. Yeah, like.
like a security checkpoint or some shit. Other dude was killed in a shootout. What was his plan? You just going to sit over there? That don't make any sense. Okay. You drive a suicide bomber to his target and, and then you just hang out in the car. What? What? No, he tried to, he tried to like go through the gate. Okay. He had a death wish too. Okay. What in the, what do you think it was personal? They were trying to, you know, somebody slept with somebody's wife. <laughs> they, they need to get inside. This, this was not personal. We're going to go to Tennessee. A Cordova woman accused of shooting a salesman that she believed he was a hit man. The SCSO said deputies were called to the shooting at about 11.45 a.m. on Wednesday, September 27th. This is our suspect. A woman who was once a Shelby County Sheriff's captain was arrested after she reportedly shot a salesman believing he was a hit man. What, do you, what are you doing in your life? That you think a hitman's after you. This is going to be good. Monica Johnson is charged with aggravated assault. Her bond was set at $4,000. Maybe not so good if it's 4000 The SCSO said deputies were called to the shooting at about 11.45 a.m. They found a man shot and he was taken to the Regional One Hospital in critical condition. According to the affidavit in the case, Johnson told detectives she told her son... Nehemiah? Nehemiah? Ne ne Nehemiah? Rimmer? Oh, he's a Rimmer. Who is serving a 20-year sentence at the at the Trusdale Turner Correctional Facility. On a 2018 conviction of a charge of rape of a child. God damn. That there was a hit out for her and him by a local gang. Nehemiah. Maybe. That, that could be it. The affidavit said on Wednesday, Johnson was sitting in her living room with her father. And so, so her kid's a kid diddler. And he said there was a hit out on them. Johnson was sitting in her living room when her father, uh, with her father and saw on her security cameras an unknown subject wearing a hoodie and carrying an assault rifle run up to the front door. According to the affidavit, she told detectives she yelled, they're here, and ran upstairs to hide in the attic. Detectives said they determined the unknown subject was actually a door-to-door -door pest control salesman wearing a blue polo and a baseball hat carrying an iPad he had been shot in the upper torso and was taken to a regional one hospital. The affidavit said deputies found bullet holes in the front door and two bullet casings in the house. It said Johnson would not admit to shooting a gun and said she hid in the attic. According to the affidavit, her father told detectives Johnson had fired the gun, which was his, uh, which was for, which was his for protection. The affidavit said the gun was found in a crawl space in the attic where Johnson had been hiding. According to court records, Johnson is the former Shelby County Sheriff's Captain who was fired and indicted in 2016 on charges of official misconduct and coercing a witness in her son's rape case. Well, fuck her.
apparently this old man jumped out of his car and like there were some kids heckling his vehicle as I can tell I, this this happened in Atlanta I believe somebody made mention of a, a killer on the loose maybe it's this guy somebody call the police <laughs> I'm like a real dick. He's got like a video game weapon on his hand. This motherfucker has been cosplaying somewhere, hasn't he? I got no other information about what happened. I can't tell you that this other video that's been going viral over the last couple of days is actually not real. It's not what people are reporting it to be. Pastor Daniel claims that a Christian preacher has the power to tame lions. Uh, that's that's false. He's not like look at the cute little babies. I get in the cage and play with them. Man is seen playing with three lions in an enclosure. A video of a man in a suit stroking three lions has been widely shared online in several African countries, but does not show a church pastor demonstrating his powers to tame lions, as many online have claimed. In the short film, a man in a blue suit can be seen playing with the lions, at one point putting his hand inside the mouth of one. Outside of the enclosure, a small crowd is watching some filming or taking pictures. The video itself is real enough and there appears to be no manipulation of the footage. Widespread claims have spread online that he is a church pastor recreating the biblical story of Daniel in the lion's den in a bid to prove his powers to his follower. Pastor Daniel brought his church members to show them that nothing can happen to a man of God. A Nigerian blogger wrote on Instagram, the video has been widely shared in recent days in Ghana and Nigeria, but appears to have originated in Somalia. In Kenya, a local television station has shared the video on its social media. Uh, this caught the attention of a Kenyan member of parliament, Ronald Kuraru, who appeared to believe that Daniel uh, believed the Daniel in the Lion story? Where we get the actual video? Yes. I think I'd play that rough with him. He's, he's like slapping him around and shit. They look very domesticated. God don't want you to treat his fucking animals like shit, dude. You pet the kitties. line from the Simpsons like you gotta pet them hard so they can feel it god that music was really loud I'm sorry oh did we ever find out what it actually was BBC has identified the man and he's not a church leader using a reverse image search we found a news story on YouTube from a 2021 filmed at a tourist park in the Somali capital, Mogadishu, in which an enclosed uh, enclosure matched the holding of the lions in the viral video. We were also able to determine that the man interviewed in the earlier film, named as Mohammed Abdurrahman Mohammed, 
was the same as the one in the clip being shared across Africa in recent days. He is a zookeeper and he's been working at the park for over eight years. The story mentioned a tourist park in Mogadishu, which uh, by searching the name on TikTok in Somali led us to an account where the original video had been posted. There are other videos of Muhammad with the lions, the oldest posted in March of this year. We also traced a Facebook page in the park's name where in April they had promoted the lions as an attraction available during uh, Eid, the Muslim festival that marks the end of Ramadan. Mr. Muhammad, the man stroking the lions, stroking is polite, spoke to the BBC Somalis Muhammad Abizaz uh, last year. He said he had trained the animals he takes care of, including lions, snakes, and now considers them safe for him to handle. Yep, there's him with a snake in his hands. Oh, he's just dressing up in suits to look fly for the, the TikTok and the Instagram, eh? They are harmless. They are like my children, he told BBC Somali. Not a pastor. Anybody watch Dancing with the Stars? Because I don't. But they had on, they had on my boy. Time to finally break into the mainstream came. My man, Matt Walsh, once called me. Justin Freakin is a formidable voice in the culture. He was invited to be on Dancing with the Stars and he trained hard for it. Hello. Hey. Hi. Come on in. Great to meet you. Hi, Casey. Matt. Matt. Yeah. Matt Walsh? That's me. You're Matt Walsh? I'm Matt Walsh. Yeah, yeah, famous bigot. Oh, okay. Um, can you hold on one second? Absolutely. Okay, hold on one second. Wait, did, did she have his head shot? I was a little surprised when he first walked in because I, I thought I was working with Matt Walsh from Veep. No, I, like, what do you mean? No, it's, it, no, it's not one Matt Walsh. Can I can't, okay. And then. It's the other, it's the bigoted Matt Walsh. informs me that I am contractually bound to work with this Matt Walsh. So, yeah. All right. Well, that was probably written in. Yeah. You know, it was a really good first meeting, I thought. I think uh, Casey got a little starstruck. But I always try to remind people that I'm just a regular guy, you know. All right, well, let's just see. Let's just try some stuff. Let's, let's just it. see what you've got. OK, so let's just start very, very simple today. Okay. And we'll just hold this rhythm nice and tight, OK? It's kind of a this thing that you're doing. Nope, it's not front to back. It's a really side yeah. to well, side. Well, I think this is what you're doing. You can mirror me, actually. You know, just like me. No, when you say mirror, you mean? Right. Like if if I if you were looking at a mirror. Now, there's a reason why she's confused, DJ Dub. Let me look at you in the mirror and then do what you're doing. Make it look do just it. like I'm doing, but imagine I'll do it bigger. So if that isn't clear, I mean, just out. To that Walsh definitely caused controversy. Out to the okay, side. I got it. Yeah, I think that was everything. Okay. Did you see what I did? He's already been eliminated. I did see that. Um, the show just came back and he's already been eliminated. Side at all? So if well, it depends on where you're standing. It's someone's side. Uh -huh. so, uh, it's going great so far, I think. You know, Mired in controversy. I always say it's a little bit like uh, riding a bike, and uh, you got to take some practice to learn how to do it, and then if you're not doing it for a while... I don't even think she's a real choreographer. ...and get back into the swing of things. You know what, let's... Like, can, I, can I give you a note? Sure, yeah. Uh, your instructor's a little unclear, and I find that in okay. dance, it's, it's better to be very clear about what you're saying. Okay. So. I've never seen a more uncoordinated person in my entire life. You're, you're, right. being a, you're being a little you're abstract. Right. Okay. Did you want to try partnering? What do you mean partnering? One dancer and another dancer dance together. They act as. Oh, you got to leave room for Jesus between you and Matt. One. So we're doing this. Well, no. I, I was I'm just using. That. I was gesturing well, you, my hands seeing, for you know. Are you looking what I'm doing right now? This is, I, a, this is a whole looks thing. Looks like you're like want to hold so a baby. I'm gonna try oh, well, a I, basic hold. I can't. I'm married, so I don't want to. That's why I have the wedding ring on. I so. okay. Try to um, avoid so, these but of... partner dancing does require partners to interact. Well, you live in sexual anarchy. A male partner, we could. Oh uh, no, I'm you not know, kidding. We... <laughs> okay, okay. 
Well, it's it's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, okay. Get gay, Matt. It, you you'll, you'll enjoy it. Shop, but it's a little unfair to the other contestants because I have such a long uh, history in the dance world. Uh, but the thing is, you know, I'm here for two reasons. One is to express myself, and two is just uh, to have fun. Not say anything about the left leg. Right, because the left so, leg does nothing. But you're standing on the left leg, so it's not doing nothing. Man, Dancing with the Stars is like the best thing that's ever happened to him. Did you want to show me some moves that you are comfortable with? You know, uh, you're, you're... I know the Macarena. I'm kind of known for that at weddings. Uh, we we don't ever want to do that. That's not even the Macarena. That's no. not even the Macarena. That's actually not it at all. That dance has a song that explains. Am I instructing now? Is that what's going on? Um, Are you the celebrity or am I? Is that's it, close. I think it's me. I don't know if you're a Google. celebrity. <laughs> he, okay, perfect. He, he kind of, he's a quasi celebrity. Um, this is called port de bras, which means carriage it's of the what? arm. Port de bras. That's French for carriage of the arm. So we just want to have a good structure and grace when we dance. What I would love is a there are definitely circles where you say Matt Walsh and this is the person that that evokes, like not the actor from Veep. If the uh, instruction could remain in English, which is the language that I speak, so. Okay, um, so let's start with our arms. We're gonna make a circle. This is called first position. That looks like you're driving like a car. Okay, it's more balletic. You know, it's really supposed okay. to be. So balletic? Like, that's not it. That is nothing, that is zero. But that's that, a thing. That's a thing that we could do. And we're doing it a looks like you're giving the air like a headlock and that's not, that's not a move. It could be. Anywhere. It could be. No. Let's, okay, let's go back to our upper body, upper body, upper, so the, so the arm. This is better than a 10 minute rant about um, you know, I'm going to make the air. How 16 year olds are the most fertile. I don't know what want you know. to use. Your two appendages coming from the shoulder. Yeah. Being upset about Taylor Swift. Let's see if those can make a interesting classical shape. That's not, that's not it. That's nothing like what I'm doing. I'm just going to base some stuff off of what you're doing. And I don't even, I don't even think she's that, like, she's not a real choreographer. I'm feeling good about this. You shouldn't though, because that's that doesn't that does not look. Well, good. again, my, my he he definitely should not feel good, and that's the reason why he was you know eliminated the very first night of Dancing with the Stars. Apparently, there was some controversy surrounding it, so we're gonna get into it. Dancing with the Star fans slam unfair voting scandal after Matt Walsh is booted out. ABC's popular competition series Dancing with the Stars returned for a brand new season on Tuesday evening, but fans were already taking shots at the show for unfairly voting out comedian Matt Walsh. Dancing with the Stars' first episode of season 32 saw Matt Walsh and his partner Coco Iwasawaki eliminated and viewers aren't happy. Matt previously decided to pull out of the competition in solidarity with the writer's strike, but took to the stage after an agreement with the WGA was made this week. Unfortunately, the his cha-cha to Poison by Bill Pimtivo <laughs> failed to impress the judges and became the first celebrity to be eliminated from the season. However, many fans weren't impressed with the decision. Goddamn right, Maynard is not impressed. I'm sure if Maynard had seen it, he wouldn't be impressed at all. His cha-cha to Poison by Bell Bib DeVoe failed to impress the judges and he became the first celebrity to be eliminated. However, many fans weren't impressed with the decision and have even accused the show of closing the vote early to fix a result. Matt Walsh on Dancing with the Stars. You just saw him training a few minutes ago. We didn't get to see Ariana Maddox before voting, hoping this doesn't cause her to lose votes. Another said, um, Dancing with the Stars, you closed voting at 9.22 p.m. before the last commercial break even started. Why are they voting someone off tonight? The last person to dance won't get as much time for fans to vote as the first person. 
Did they do it to Matt? As as a way to get at him for solidarity with the was this retaliation for standing on the picket line with the Rogers strike? You know, Matt Walsh once called me a formidable voice in the culture. Justin Freakin is a formidable voice in the culture. This is a really good bit. I'm sad it's not going to be able to, like, I can't put it on YouTube. Because I'm banned on YouTube. God, you like, I, I, would, I would make a, you know, Dancing with the Stars with... You know, like I'd, I'd take I'd take that Matt Walsh, I'd, I'd transpose the other Matt Walsh's head. It'd be it'd be all cool, but no, I, I gotta be banned from YouTube. Maynard's not impressed with the decision to ban me from YouTube. A family's vacation was interrupted when a family of bears stopped by in search of food. Oh, it's adorable. Oh, look at a cute thing. It's got big old balls too. Oh shit. Get, get, uh -uh, get, out. get back up there. Oh, they just won't come hang out. Oh, you grilling? No wonder. Get back up there. They smell that food. Having a Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Wouldn't you come looking for some fucking meat if you smelled that shit? They say not to feed the bears, but you know, how, how you gonna like, how you gonna tease the bears like that with that sweet smell? God damn it. You got big old balls. He's gonna walk up and ask for some food. Hey, dude, you you making some shit over here? Get, get, uh uh, get out. Uh uh. Get back up there. I'm trying to get the food. Get back up there. Can you blame the bears? Teaching them bad habits. How you teaching the bear bad habits? It's just nature. Can go towards the smelly smell. Anyone who is approached by a black bear should attempt to scare it away by yelling, shouting, and raising their arms to appear bigger. I don't know if that's the pro. I thought, I thought you were supposed to play dead, but apparently you want to try to scare the motherfucker away. I'm not so I'm not so sure that I want to try to scare a bear. Sparkles would totally do that. Sparkles would dance around try to scare a bear. She did it to Maynard all the fucking time. <laughs> like May Maynard kind of likes to be roughhoused. That's a cute fucking bear. Go ahead, light one up, tip one back. It's all right to have a little fun before you hit the sack. I'm Justin Freakin. We'll see you tomorrow night on the Troll Patrol, live but not on YouTube.